Hey there, traders. Welcome back to your daily trading and market recap, where we trade the E-mini futures, mostly. The levels you see on this chart of the SPY will be our baseline for entering trades in the E-mini futures today during the open session. Check out the description below this video to learn more about the mission of this channel and some background on this trading strategy. My name is Sam. Today is Monday, October 14. It is about 14, 13 minutes or so after 8 a.m. Eastern as I'm making this pre-market section of today's recap. In the overnight session, the futures have kept price elevated from after the push on Friday. There is an upsloping trend line that is shown in this blue-green colored line right here. Price has been climbing this trend line for a while now, so it wouldn't be too surprising for reactions to continue around it. It could provide some trades depending on other market behavior at the time. The light blue line is simply the high from Friday. That's at 580.33. Price is currently above now, just barely. Not sure I would trade this level unless price happens to be coming into it from farther away. It could be like the bull axis area though. So if the bulls can stay above, price could get pushed higher. On the other side, the level at 577.60 could act as the bear axis, where if they get below, the bears might have more chutzpah to drive price a little lower. The other levels are typical. Notice the zone at the top indicated by the dashed lines that is between 583.68 and 583.12. We'll come back to this chart after the closing bell to talk about what happened and analyze any trades taken as a result of these levels. Catch you on the other side. It is now after 10 p.m. The overall picture looked bullish on Friday, and sure enough, price continued to climb today as well. But not before meeting resistance up at this zone that we had on the board this morning. So how would you have traded these levels today per the rules? First, I'll point out that this level at 581.54 was a no trade because after giving the market 15 minutes to settle in, they were already well above this level up here, and they did not look back for the rest of the day. So you would not have entered a trade when the SPY hit this level early on. This is another good example of how giving the market some time to settle in worked out much better than just jumping into a trade quickly, like within, say, four minutes or so after the opening bell for the first time the SPY hit this level. If you did that, a short trade here would not have been good at all. Better no trade than a bad trade. So now we're looking at this zone. I didn't say much about the zone this morning, but you should know by now how I treat zones per the rules of my trading strategy. Essentially, this whole area is good for overhead resistance. To keep the tracking law consistent, I treat each level independently in zones like this. Like The biggest difference is that there's the full expectation that if you were to sell at the lower extreme of a zone like this, you will likely be selling again toward the top of the zone and averaging in if the first level doesn't give you the resistance that you need. For today, though, the market was nice enough to give you whatever you wanted. If you sold at the first level, that came up to 583.12 to the penny and pulled away for a nice little base hit right there. And let's say you decided to sell somewhere in the middle of this zone. Same thing. You would have been rewarded with a nice base hit of four points or more in this case. Or if you just waited for the top or did all three or two, sold at the top level, you would have been rewarded with another base hit. But strictly adhering to the rules, we're just going to call this two base hits, selling at this level, selling at that level. And it was resistance, pretty easy to see. So do you just want to pause here for a moment and ask yourself how it was that I was able to identify this zone of overhead resistance long before the opening bell this morning? For today, there was no prior price action in the SPY up in this area. It was uncharted territory. So if you think it's magic or something, well, it's not. I teach how to find these levels like this in the upcoming trading course. So anyway, once this zone was satisfied, I'll just make this, make the levels dotted. This is what I do after I satisfy a level or a zone. So that zone is off the table for any more short trades. Now, if they were to get above it for a certain period of time and come back into it, it's possible that you could have taken what I call a recycle trade, this time on the long side, but that's a non-factor because they got above it and never got back to it. Uh, I did not test that area again. So officially, two base hits for the day, one at each level of this zone. Here are my trades. Essentially did kind of the same thing. Uh, just you can see the time in the lower right-hand corner. Started out by thinking I was going to get a long bounce off of this 581.59. That wasn't a, didn't ever happen. So here I'm selling one at the lower part of this zone. And instead of getting four points, I held off for a little more. Didn't get it. Not a problem. They went up and got me 
filled on the second part of this position, so it was short two. And I just let this thing run out for a while. And you see my profit objective down here, uh, $737.50. Could have just taken this whole thing off for a decent base hit for my two contracts, but I took I changed this to one to buy back one. And I'll point out the red line here is my fumble threshold. So if, if I were to see closes above here, a certain amount of closes and certain things happening, then I would re Now, I actually had other levels up here that aren't on the board. So I felt pretty comfortable that they would probably hit some type of overhead resistance. But anyway, that's just what the red line is. Never became a factor. But So here's where I changed it to take one contract off and then trail the other one. It didn't get very far. I did get that and trailed it down, I think, that far. That was it. Been better off just taking the whole thing off, or I should say didn't make as much as I could have, but not complaining. So I got that trade in the bag, and then they got back above, and as you know, never looked back. I actually stopped this recording, I think it was after 12 or so, had some lunch. Is there anything we can tell from the daily chart? Well, not really. They're pushing up, and they're getting pretty far above the 20-period moving average. Now, they could get way above it or way below it market can always go longer and farther than you expect it to go. There's got to be some destination up here somewhere. It becomes a function of timing and a few other things. And let me just point out on the hourly chart, if I zoom into that, I said on Friday that this is bullish on its face and they could even come down farther somewhere in the middle of this and still bounce, but they chose to bounce for a gap above this morning. So that's pretty bullish, but they're not going to do that forever. Over on the E-mini chart, I'm not going to bring that up right now, but 6,000 doesn't look too far away. I don't want to really predict anything because I'm only looking at these interim day trades and I'm not looking for major moves or major destinations typically, but everything still is bullish. But if and when they get to the destination, expect some bigger moves. Like a lot of energy can be released in the downward direction. I'm not going to say when that is because I don't really know, but we'll keep an eye on things every single day. And tomorrow morning, once we get settled in, I'll have some more refined levels on the board uh, like I did today. And we'll go from there. On the tracking log, here are the two levels that were the official base hits. Four points at each. We've given you eight points playing by the rules. And then my trades over here, this is Sam's trades. You can just read the notes. I got out with basically, that's the exact net amount of points I got because the total was $593.50 before commissions. And I did notice here, just want to point out that pretty good run so far in October at least if you're just strictly playing by the rules, which you've seen all these trades, or at least you've seen how they would have worked. So I might just go ahead and like filter out just October just to show you what that looks like. This is playing by the rules so far the first couple weeks of October. Pretty good percentages here. If you just want to take a look at that. And honestly, my trades aren't as good, mostly because I haven't taken trades on some days, just haven't been able to, traveling or just other things, busy. But look at this. So if they were trading two contracts at every single level for the past two weeks, and you would have averaged $725 a day. Of course, it's uh, 10 days, I guess, because, yep, we have 90, 10 profit loss percent there, 90% profit, 10% loss because we have that one fumble, but 72.50 for a couple weeks, not too shabby. Let's go ahead and take a look at my trades just for comparison. This is all of October thus far. So here we go. Less trades, profit percentages uh, aren't as good. I'm um, not going to complain about the averages, but that's what I have for today. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate the support. I hope you made some money today if you had the levels from the morning. Tomorrow morning, like I said, we'll have new levels. Do this again. If you found some value in today's recap, uh, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you won't miss another daily update video. Drop a comment if you have any questions or want to share your own trading wins or any other kind of type of comment or feedback. I would appreciate getting more feedback. So, Let's keep this up and, and find new levels each day. Talk with you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.